Okay, so I am Nirmal. I am here to talk on a topic of Cassandra now and for the future. Uh, there is a little history behind choosing this topic. So the reason being like uh, this is something like uh, the Apache Cassandra site. There is a, a call out stating that this is a DB which uh, handles massive amount of data without losing sleep. Okay, the losing sleep is the caption which uh, I hold off. So that's going to be a DB which is for now and future. So there are some lot of justification which I come to my mind. So I just want to present it out to this audience. So the ongoing challenge as a DB, we have a lot many and also ahead of us, at least for the next 10 years, these are the uh, challenges we have. So there is one DB which is just solving this ongoing challenges in a pretty good way, like the growing complexity of the data, or the Linux on scalability when you're scaling your databases down or the increase of data volumes or the security things and the availability. So these are all the ongoing challenge for a DB. And ahead of us, there is definitely, there is a big challenge just like going to the cloud and a DB that is need to be operationally be eliminated. And there are a lot of stuff going on on the uh, future challenges as well. So that is one DB which could I could think of where the ongoing challenges and as well as the future challenges are met. So with that, I just want to start over. So the first thing I want to call out is the scalability. So scalability, Cassandra is like by default, architecture is like scalable and elastic. So having said that, it can scale vertically and horizontally. And the most major point is like without any downtime, it's getting uh, scalable. So that's a good feature of Cassandra. So on the fully open source side, yeah, it has a very huge uh, fan base community. And like, uh, if you see, like, I mean, I just pulled a screenshot of around 11 p.m. IST at 2020 when I was preparing this slide. I see like uh, for the past one hour, there was like 19 to 15 comments, which means that there is a huge amount of fan base for this uh, code base. And again, like there are 16K uh, bucks that is open for the last years and 14K bucks have been actively solved and uh, followed by. So... The, on the zero time guaranteed, yeah, this is one DB where I can think of that whether you do upgrade or downgrade, whether you scale up or scale down, there is no compromise on this downtime. Like this is really built for the applications which is not having any downtime. So that's a very good future. And like uh, as an application owner, you can't afford this uh, downtime as well. So it's one of the good future of Cassandra. Like we can trust for now and the futures. And this is something uh, futuristic on my side. What I feel is that there are like around 13K repos in the uh, our open source GitHub, where I can see that each and every commit has been focused on how to eliminate the operational work, how to eliminate the admin works, and make sure that Cassandra is fully focused on the development activity and just I can eliminate the operational activity. This just shows to me that like there is a day which is coming soon where I have a DB that is without admin, which is just like a outcome of this one. And a cloud native, which is becoming a new normal for all the major players. And Cassandra is like also part of it, like uh, along with this, its own architectural features, like availability, scalability, and everything like this is again now becoming cloud native. So which in turn is reducing the cost and giving uh, more uh, leverage to the community and as well as the business can focus upon what is needed and what we can leverage out of Cassandra, not just focusing on the infra and or what other things. And uh, this is again a futuristic DB, which is currently friendly towards the IoT platform and uh, wherever you need real-time analytics, all those being carried out with the current architecture itself. So because, and again, one more thing, the read and write, it's a heavy volume can be, I mean, Cassandra is not worried about the volume and everything else. So it's a matter of scaling up and down. So it's again, uh, already it's been friendly to analytics. So I'm hoping that maybe in the next 20 or uh, 25 years, like this uh, DB will be fully supported for this analytics or uh, real-time streaming. So being, uh, I mean, like now all the enterprise are in a stressful situation where they want to move their uh, enterprise, your data-driven enterprise. So I personally feel that Cassandra is a DB, which is uh, going to be uh, for the future, where you want to consider your data as an asset you want to certainly move to Cassandra because it has all the features that is needed for us to move an enterprise from data driven from, from normal to a data driven. Where like in future there will be a day where data will be counted as an asset. So these all proves me that the architecture way of Cassandra is in such a way that it is supporting now and for the future. And uh, what I do typically is like me and my team at Verizon, like we move from our legacy database and we modernize the platform to Cassandra for the last uh, four years. 
And uh, at the same time, I want to thank the team who is beginning this Kesantra enhancement proposals. I am a continuous leader of that one. I see a lot of good proposals and we are continuously metallizing that one. So kudos to all the team here. Thank you, team. Thanks, Nirmal. Thanks so much. Uh, I know that there's a lot in there. Everybody has so many good things to say. Um, so I re we really appreciate that. Um, I also wanted to say, um, we're, we're, we're so excited for the stability that has really gone into the last few years of the development so that we can feel confident in pushing to production and upgrading to Cassandra 4 from the different versions that we're currently on. But then also, I think it's given people a little bit of time to kind of bake the ideas in their heads of where we want to take things next. I mentioned the CAS operator previously. I know the companies that he mentioned have contributed tools like there's the open source tools around Medusa and, and Reaper and other things. There's Kate Sandra that has a kind of grouping software stack that that uh, that allows you to do a whole cloud native stack um, to put Cassandra together to make it even easier to manage. Um, and then some of the Cassandra enhancement proposals that are coming, those are going to be really great for the next generation. So we already have things like next generation indexing. Um, and some others that are uh, guardrails and, and uh, there, there's just a bunch of different uh, enhancement proposals. So if you have a really great idea that you can see within your organization should be in the community, uh, feel free uh, to contribute and to start threads on the mailing list to, to, to see where we can all work together to make these things happen. So let's see. Thank you again, Normal.